In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good morning. I pray that everyone here and everyone at home uh, watching our streamed Mass will be safe today in God's hands. We know he is merciful and we turn ourselves over to him for forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I've done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and to bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. That he may give us a mind pleasing to you and graciously conform us to your will. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Wishing to determine the truth about why Paul was being accused by the Jews, the commander freed him and ordered the chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin to convene. Then he brought Paul down and made him stand before them. Paul was aware that some were Sadducees and some Pharisees, so he called out before the Sanhedrin, my brothers, I am a Pharisee, the son of Pharisees. I am on trial for hope in the resurrection of the dead. When he said this, a dispute broke out between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and the group became divided. For the Sadducees say that there is no res resurrection or angels or spirits, while the Pharisees acknowledge all three. A great uproar occurred, and some scribes belonging to the Pharisee party stood up and sharply argued, We find nothing wrong with this man. Suppose a spirit or an angel has spoken to him. The dispute was so serious that the commander, afraid that Paul would be torn to pieces by them, ordered his troops to go down and rescue Paul from their midst and take him into the compound. The following night, the Lord stood by him and said, Take courage, for just as you have borne witness to my cause in Jerusalem, so you must also bear witness in Rome. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. Keep me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, my Lord, are you? O Lord, my allotted portion and my cup, you it is who hold fast my lot. Keep me safe, O God, you are my hope. I bless the Lord who counsels me. Even in the night my heart exhorts me. I set the Lord ever before me. With him at my right hand, I shall not be disturbed. Keep me, Keep me safe, safe, O God, you are my hope. Therefore, my heart is glad and my soul rejoices. My body, too, abides in confidence, because you will not abandon my soul to the netherworld, nor will you suffer your faithful one to undergo corruption. Keep, Keep me safe, safe, O God, you are my hope. You will show me the path to life, fullness of joy in your presence, the delights at your right hand forever. Keep me safe, O oh God, you are my hope. May 
they all be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that the world may believe that you sent me, says the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Lifting up his eyes to heaven, Jesus prayed, saying, I pray not only for these, but also for those who will believe in me through their word, so that they may all be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they may also be in us, that the world may believe that you sent me. And I have given them the glory you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, that they may be brought to perfection as one that the world may know that you sent me and that you love them even as you loved me. Father, they are your gift to me. I wish that where I am they also may be with me, that they may see my glory that you gave me, because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world also does not know you, but I know you, and they know that you sent me. I made known to them your name, and I will make it known that the love with which you loved me may be in them, and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. and brothers, Jesus, in a very long prayer at the Last Supper, prayed for unity, prayed for oneness, prayed for wholeness, and we know that this is a work that has unended, that is not ended yet. It's a work that demands to be completed. Let's hope that it's a work in progress in our lives and something that is not abandoned. This search for oneness, this effort to make us one. Yesterday I mentioned that we need to be more and more immersed in the Trinity and the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As Jesus expressed today, their oneness, we will only be one with God and with one another if we are immersed, if we are one, if we find our unity, our oneness in God. As Jesus said, the world does not know this, does not know him. And we see that in all the divisions, in all the separations in our world today, in our own lives, we are split. We find that, that split, that division, in the first reading today from the Acts of the Apostles, when Paul invokes that division, when he has the Sadducees and the Pharisees at each other, and because of that division he, and, and the violence that it was causing, those who believed in the resurrection and those that didn't believe in the resurrection, they did not find oneness in that, in them, in, in that particular belief. And so there was great division and Paul was able to escape. And God himself, Jesus himself, told Paul, your work is not finished. 
Your testimony here, you're witnessing here in Jerusalem, okay. We're moving you to somewhere else. We're moving you to Rome. So do your work over there. Yes, achieving unity, achieving peace, achieving oneness is something that we sorely lack in our lives. Individuals, families, we call that dysfunction. There's so much, so much dysfunction in our world today. And so we need to hear Jesus' prayer. We need to let it touch our lives so that, yes, we are one with Christ and in Christ. And only through love, only through love. So eradicating sin and division and evil and all that, that spirit of selfishness and and division. We've got to get away from that. As a, as a church, as a people of God, we have to get away from that saying, I, 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 me, me. We have to stop saying we. In all the oneness that we can find in that we are the people of God. We are the body of Christ. So that our prayer today, as we approach Pentecost, asking the Holy Spirit to really cleanse us of division and give us, give us that, that spirit of oneness, of being together in Christ, which we will do at this table. stand. We turn with confidence to the Father who beg to petition him for our needs. For unity in the church, in religious communities, parish families, and for return to full unity for all of us who are brothers and sisters in Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are prisoners because of their faith, as was St. Paul long ago, that those in authority will treat them with justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That many may choose the Lord as their allotted portion and their cup. That they may know the counsel of the Holy Spirit as they set the Lord before them as their one love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That as we keep vigil with Mary in the upper room, our communion with Jesus in this Eucharist may prepare us to accept with docile and responsive hearts the downflow of his promised spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Ernesto B. Catillo, for whom this Mass is offered, let us pray to the Lord. We pray also for vocations to the priesthood, the religious life, and the lay missionary life. Many of our missionaries have died during this time. Priests, we need to replace them so our church may be growing in unity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O Mary, health of the sick, you always shine on our paths as a sign of salvation and of hope. We entrust ourselves to you. You know what we need, and we are sure you will provide, so that as at Cana in Galilee, we may return to joy and to feasting after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to do as we are told by Jesus, who has taken upon himself our sufferings and carried our sorrows, leading us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, Make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after his resurrection, he plainly appeared to all his disciples and was taken up to heaven in their sight, that he might make us sharers in his divinity. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, Every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to you, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be brought, it may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be always with you. Amen. Offer one another a sign of this peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should come under my roof, 
but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I tell you the truth, it is for your good that I go, but if I do not go away, the paraclete will not come to you, says the Lord. Alleluia. Let us pray. May the mysteries we have received, O Lord, we pray, enlighten us by the instruction they bring and restore us through our participation in them, that we may merit the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Um, just a couple of announcements. Father Roland will be uh, recording a message for the parish sometime today, so you can find it on our website. Also, uh, beginning this morning, uh, after you receive communion on your way out, you are allowed to circle back to any seat uh, for a few minutes of Thanksgiving prayer. Also, please be aware that our masses will be uh, in uh, vivo, in and in person this weekend, our regular schedule of masses, but only the 10 a.m. and uh, the new mass will be live streamed. Only those two. May the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Let us go in peace. An act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. Amen.